Good morning and welcome back to Destiny Speaks. Today is Tuesday and I am so blessed and so excited to be back with you guys. I have been on vacation so I have not been doing Destiny Speaks. I did try to get a video out on yesterday but of course when I have a press to get the word out it seems like this equipment just does not want to work and I'm having an issue today so I hope that the word will come forth and that you're able to hear it. But anyway I hope you guys have been encouraging one another, that you have been lifting up one another, but most importantly, I hope that you have been lifting up the name of Jesus, because the word says, if I be lifted up, I being the King of kings and the Lord of lords, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So anyway, when I got back from vacation last week, my spirit just felt like it was in a quiet place. You know, I really didn't do a lot of posting to Facebook. Um, I, I just, I didn't talk to a lot of people. It was if the Lord just had me in a quiet place and that was okay for me because it gave me the opportunity to just observe some things. And as I read the statuses on Facebook and talked with different people that I came in contact with, you know, everybody was talking talking about, you know, what they were doing for God and this, that, and the other. And even though I saw God in those statuses and I heard God in their conversation, it was more about self and what self was doing and where they were going to be preaching and what they were going to be doing. But uh, people of God, we have to remember that we can do nothing outside of God, that it's God who is his anointing that rests upon you, that causes you to do the things that you do. And, you know, as I was listening to these people and, you know, some of them were just, you know, they were spouting God this and God that, but the lifestyle was a totally different uh, way than what you saw on Facebook or what you saw when you met them in person. And I said, well, Lord, what's going on? You know, the people are, are, are calling your name and they're, they're using your name, but they, they are not living for you. And God said, the problem is that people just don't have a heart for me anymore. They don't have a heart for God because you see, when you have a heart for God, you can't live your life any kind of way. When you have a heart for God, you don't compromise and you you don't go with the crowd because it's the path of least resistance. You love what God loves and you hate what God hates, okay? There is no great area for you. When you have a heart for God, then it causes you to want to live holy, okay? When your flesh begins to rise up in you and you have the word of God in your heart, that's what's going to help you do what's right. But you know, a lot of people know what's right to do. They know what the word of God says, and they've already purposed in their mind and purposed in their heart that I'm going to do what I want to do. Yes, I know what the word of God says, but I'm going to live my life the way that I think that I want to live my life and, and the way that it benefits my flesh. See, that's how you talk when you don't have a heart for God. Then you live for your flesh. So when situations come up, you don't have anything to fight Satan with. So you give in to the desires of your flesh. Even knowing what the truth is, you don't want to retain that truth in your heart. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, the first chapter, the 21st, the 28th verse, it says, and even those that did not like to retain the knowledge of God, that he gave them over to a reprobate mind. There are people who don't even want to retain God in their knowledge because if they do, if you retain God in your knowledge and you retain him in your heart, when your flesh rises up, then you're going to use that word that's on a on the inside of you to cause you to do what's right. So there are people that are saying, listen, I know what's right, but that's not what I want to do. I want to go ahead and sleep with this person. I'm going to go ahead and marry this man or this woman, you know, because I've been waiting on God and nothing has happened. So now I'm going to live for my flesh. Okay. Now I'm going to satisfy my flesh instead of satisfying my spirit. That's what happens when you don't have a heart for God. When you haven't retained the knowledge of God in your heart, then you will go ahead and feed your flesh. And so I was looking for examples of this in the Bible. And the Lord sent me to the book of Genesis. I believe it's the 25th tra chapter, but you know, I give you scripture reference at the end. And I read about Esau and Jacob and Esau and Jacob were two brothers. They were twins. 
Esau was the firstborn. And we know that during biblical times, the firstborn, you know, had a lot of privileges. He was the one that received um, a greater inheritance. And he had a lot of, you know, honor and respect in the family because he was the firstborn. It was a sacred position. You know, God always, first fruits were very important to God, the first fruits of everything. So your birthright, your birthplace was a very sacred thing to God. And uh, Esau was, the Bible said, a skillful hunter. And Jacob was more of one that, uh, uh, the type of man that stayed around the tent and he liked to cook. And I don't know, maybe he liked to clean. Maybe he swept out the tent. I don't know. But uh, Esau came in one evening and he had been um, hunting and what have you. And he was famished. So he asked his brother for a bowl of soup. And Jacob, being the cunning man that he is, he said, listen, if you will sell me your birthright, I will give you a bowl of soup. And guess what? Esau didn't even think twice about it. He said, you know what? What good is this birthright doing me? You know, the thoughts going through his head, I imagine he's saying, well, I can't do anything with it until my father dies. And, you know, who knows if he's going to have anything left. So what do I care? Here, you can have my birthright. He was willing to sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. He wanted to satisfy his flesh rather than satisfy his spirit. And that's how a lot of us are today. We would rather satisfy our flesh. We would rather sell our righteousness and our holiness, our salvation to Satan for a bowl of soup. Your bowl of soup may be a one night stand. Your bowl of soup may be marrying the wrong person. Your bowl of soup may be going outside of God's will to, to increase your finances. I don't know what your bowl of soup is today, but I'm here to tell you that that you have to get your heart right. Listen, I wish I could have brought you a cute message this morning about, you know, how everything's going to be all right and God is going to bless you. Well, guess what? Everything is going to be all right and God is going to bless you. But I really needed to get the word out this morning that you need to guard your heart. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life, okay? So I just want you to just think about that today. I want you to just, you know, start hiding the word of God in your heart. Retain the word of God in your heart. That word retain means to, to keep, to maintain possession of, okay? So you want to maintain possession of the knowledge of God so that when your flesh rises up, you'll have something to fight it with. Don't let God turn you over to a reprobate mind. Listen, I don't know at what point he decides that, you know, it's too much, that you've gone too far, that you have totally turned against him. I don't know what point that is, but neither do you. So if you know the truth of God, if you know the what the word says and you have chosen to live your life like you want to, know that God is going to turn you over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, to live a life. You know, a reprobate mind is one that does that does not even have discernment as to what is is right. Now you've gone so far that you don't even know what the truth is anymore. And I don't want that for you today. I love you too much and so does God. Listen, I don't know what this message is going to sound like because it's microphone. Everything is going crazy. But that's the word of the Lord for today. I hope that you will receive it. This has been Destiny Speaks. I'm going to get this thing together and I will see you next time. Have a blessed day and I love you. It's good to see you again. Bye-bye.